All right, folks, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming out today. My name is Emmett. I will be the announcer here today. Just wanted to thank you all for uh, making it out to the second annual Nagios World Conference. Today, uh, our speaker here is Sherry Cabral, and she is, uh, since 2001, Senior Database Architect with Mozilla Firefox. And uh, she's also doing the MySQL Database Communi Community Pro Podcast available on iTunes. So everybody give a big round of applause to uh, Sherry here. Thanks, Emmett. I do want to clarify your notes. There were two sentences there. I've been using Nagios since 2001. And I'm a senior database admin architect at Mozilla. I've only been at Mozilla a year, so didn't want to uh, didn't want to do that. So this is alerting with MySQL and Nagios. Who here? I'm assuming everyone here kind of uses. Who here uses MySQL and uses Nagios to? Uh, okay, good. Um, so the biggest problem with Nagios, right, is what are you going to alert on? And you do want to alert. I know there's a talk uh, later about alerting on um, actual user experience as opposed to just, you know, is HTTP running, right? You probably want to see that, that a page actually is delivered. Um, but the biggest problem in, in anything is you want to monitor something that you can fix. So for example, you don't want to get page that there's a long running query if your answer is always just, well, let it go. You only want to get page for a long running query if your answer is, let's kill it. Um, so a long running query might not really be something you want to page on unless it's running really long or unless it's locking other queries. So you might want to page on if you're getting queries that are locked, for example. You don't really care how long something takes. You know, it could take forever in MySQL. You don't care. As long as it's not interfering with anything else, that's the important thing. Um, you know, backup disk space, right? You want to learn about that. Um, max connections. If you're getting close to your limit of maximum connections, uh, what MySQL will do if you hit max connections is it will say, sorry, we're closed, no more connections, you can't connect, which to the end user going through a web app is usually the page keeps loading and nothing happens or maybe there's an error, which is not usually desired. Um, the point of max connections was so that you didn't end up using too many threads which would use too much memory which would crash MySQL. Um, but the fix, at least in today's world, is kind of the same as the crash. It doesn't really matter that it didn't crash except for the fact because the user still can't get to the, the data. Um, except, of course, when you crash, uh, you could risk corruption and all that kind of stuff. So that's, crashing is bad, but um, if you can't get to the database at all, that's bad too. And you can easily monitor uh, max connections, theoretically, um, to, do, to be able to figure out if you want to increase that or decrease the number of connections coming if you have a connection pool. So the thing I love about Nagios is that anyone can write a plugin. Now, the problem with Nagios is anyone can write a plugin. <laughs> And anyone who's downloaded something from Nagios Exchange and, you know, like downloaded three or four different things, it's, you know, it's like when you want a free program for your phone or something and you're like, I just want to know what the weather is and you download one thing and it kind of tell, tells you like the temperature and you're like, but it doesn't tell you if it's going to rain. You know, so then you go to download the second one. So there are official Nagios plugins for MySQL. Um, they're Check MySQL and Check MySQL Query. What Check MySQL does is it checks for database connectivity. It checks if you want to. if it's a slave, it'll check if the slave is running, and that will all also check the slave lag using seconds behind master. I'm pretty sure that's all it does. I haven't looked at it in a while. Um, one of the problems with using something for a long time is that you kind of get it in your head that this is what this does, and it might do other things, but you, you don't go back and read you know, the changes or release notes. So feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. At any time, by the way, you know, raise your hand. I interrupt people all the time, so I have it coming to me. So feel free to just raise your hand, and I'll you know, call on you, and, and we'll do stuff. Check my SQL query. Um, is actually good. It checks the output that of a query um, is within a certain range. But it's numeric. It has to be a numerical range. And you have to give the range itself. So you can't just say if something's greater than zero. You have to say if it's between, you know, zero and like a million or one and a million. Um, you can't just say, oh, I want to make sure that it's whatever. And it has to be numerical. So there are limitations, but it's pretty good for that kind of getting the user experience of the, the database isn't just running. It can actually perform a query and actually get something. So for example, if you have some kind of queue that should always have some, um, something in it, you can use this to, uh, to do that. And we, we use that at Mozilla. So here's a list of third-party plugins. Uh, back a couple years ago, when I wanted to do stuff with MySQL, a little more robust with MySQL, I was looking at, there were seven different plugins, um, including the Check MySQL standard. And they all did different things. So in MySQL, you have system variables which can be seen by doing a show variables, and that's what you set in the my.cnf configuration file. There's also status variables, which is what you get when you say show status. So that could be things like how long has the system been up? There's an uptime status. 
how many connections are currently being used, right? Max used connections versus your system variables are things like how many max connections are set, so that's max connections. Um, how much memory should be devoted to a certain buffer pool, for example. Those are system variables. Um, only one of the seven ones that I had downloaded at the time had any caching at all. Now, why is caching important? If you want to check 100 things on your MySQL server, variables, values, status, anything like that, you don't want to have to connect 100 times you know, every, say, five minutes if you're running these checks every five minutes. You don't want to have each check run, you know, go to MySQL, do a show variables, come back and get that. Because what happens is whenever anything gets a little slow, you know, you end up going to your database and you're like, what's taking up all my connections when it's slow? And all you see is the Nagios daemon running and you're like, oh, it's Nagios, 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 Nagios is running a query and then Nagios is running a query. Oh, look, Nagios is running a query. So um, it, gets, uh, it gets tedious and there's no reason not to just cache it. Um, it's really easy to cache things. We do it, you know, you can do it easily in a, in a file or anything like that. Um, and then the other thing was calculations. I wanted to be able to do arbitrary calculations. By arbitrary, I mean take any system variable, any status variable, and just calculate with it. What if I want to know about the last time, um, you know, how many max connections that you have, for example, would be max used connections divided by max connections times 100, right? Get the percentage of max connections. Um, but there were only two actual third-party plugins that had any calculations at all, and they were all hard-coded. And by hard-coded, I mean they had modes that said, oh, Here's this max connection mode that does this calculation, which is great. But you know, I'm a DBA. I know what I want to calculate. Some things I want to calculate rates of slow queries, maybe. You know, and if it didn't have that hard coded calculation, I was out of luck. So this is what I saw a lot too. And and you know, God love open source. Let us know what you'd like to see, which is awesome. But to me, that became code word with those hard coded things for if something changes, we're going to have to change our code. Right? If there is a new release of MySQL and a variable name changes, we're going to have to change our code. And I wanted arbitrary val values. I want to be able to say, look, if the va variable name changes, let me just change my, my Nagios um, options and variables, and that's it. Um, so not having seen that, I made one myself. So this is what I wanted, which was you know, I could use any arbitrary system variable, status variables. You know, it would cache, and it would be flexible calculations that I could do myself. Now, obviously, none of these have that, but very few even have, you know, none of them had caching, which had calculations at all. There were some where you could only do status variables or only do system variables or some of the other. You know, it's, it wasn't a good solution for me. So I made mysqlhealthcheck.pl um, back when I was at a consulting company because we had a lot of clients who, you know, we wanted to monitor. So let's talk a little about caching. So caching just saves information to a file. Uh, what it does is there is a directory that you give it, um, and that's probably here, yeah, cache directory, path to directory. And what it does is it uses that file instead of connecting again. And the file is, consists of the host name and the port. So MySQL can only have one instance of MySQL per port and IP, or host name. So even if you're running multiple instances on a machine, you can still cache for all that. Max cache age. So this is important. How long do you cache it for? When do you go and look at the file, and look how old it is, and then you know, invalidate that and go and get it? So you can give it a max cache age of seconds. Um, what, we, what I've usually implemented is you know, it's a regular five minute Nagios check, you know, a five minute interval, and then make the max cache age five minutes. Which means if you're only want, running one check with this, there's no point in caching. But if you, the second you run a second check, now you're using the cached file. Now what if you don't want to use the cache? You can do dash dash no cache. Maybe you have some kind of calculation that you always want to use current data. You can actually do dash dash no cache. So we are giving that option too. So it's very flexible because you know I said I don't I don't want to be forced to use the cache, right? Um, you can use dash dash no cache, or you can not put in the cache here if you don't want it. Um, but if you put in the if you want to force the connection, but then have that cache things. So for example, later on I'll show you how you can look at process list um, entries. So with process list entries, we wanted to get the most current one, but that result should be cached. So here's the meat of it. So there's a few modes. The first mode that I'm going to talk about is variable comparison mode, or var comp mode. There's an array that we have called metadata, and uh, it's a, an associative array, I guess is what you call it. Um, I may be using